Okay, hey everybody, good day to you, God bless you, and welcome to this family Bible study. Um, ready to get back in our Father's Word. We're going to be <clears throat> picking it up with Genesis chapter 44, and if you remember <clears throat> last time in chapter 43, um, they had taken the food that they got from Egypt and went back, and uh, they were um, out of uh, food again and so Jacob sent told them to go back down to Egypt and get more food but um, the condition was that Joseph had given them when he sent them back was that uh, they would bring Benjamin um, their youngest brother with them this time of course Joseph hasn't revealed his identity to them they're still unaware who Joseph is um, they think he's dead and Joseph is um, kind of letting this play out and there's a couple of lessons that are that are going to be taught in this and um, God working through Joseph and so uh, Judah had given his word that he would uh, be responsible for Benjamin and um, in faith that God would protect them Israel agreed and sent Benjamin back with them uh, when they got there um, Joseph had brought them in to dine with him and uh, had the tables set um, according to their ages. And at the end of uh, chapter 43, um, they sat down at the table to eat and they marveled at one another because Joseph had had the table set and had their places set in the order of their ages. And and this is kind of freaking them out a little bit because they believe that Joseph is an Egyptian and Joseph is uh, playing his part really well and not uh, and holding his peace and his emotion um, from seeing his brothers and his younger brother for the first time uh, back from them uh, he went into his chamber even to weep and so they didn't see him his emotion <clears throat> so um, at the end of chapter 43, um, they had set the table and sat down to eat, and uh, Benjamin's uh, plate was five times so much as any of, of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him, and that was the last verse of chapter 43. We're going to pick it up in Genesis chapter 44, um, a word of wisdom from our father, the book of Genesis chapter 44. Verse 1, in Yeshua's precious name, and it reads, And he commanded the steward of his house, who? Joseph. Joseph commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the man's sack with food, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth. This has already happened one time, the first time they, they went back. Verse 2, And put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, and his corn money, and he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. And this is um, this was the fourth step uh, by Joseph to try them and to prove whether they were the same brethren still and would treat Benjamin as they had treated Joseph. And what this means is, is when Joseph sends them back. Again, to get their to get his father um, here in in the future, uh, he wants to see what they're going to do whenever they get halfway back to Canaan, and it is found out that Joseph's cup, the the large silver cup, the one that that the the uh, the leader would drink out of. Uh, is found in Benjamin's sack and of course Benjamin didn't put it there and so Joseph wants to see if they'll treat Benjamin how they treated him because you remember um, Joseph never did anything wrong to them he was just blessed from God and um, they were jealous of Joseph but he didn't do anything but get these dreams from God and um, they were in, they ended up being jealous of Joseph and, and wanted to kill him, but Judah had uh, spoken up and uh, convinced them to uh, just 
put him in the pit or sell him into bondage. And so Joseph is doing this to see that if when the cup is found in Benjamin's sack on their way back uh, to retrieve their father, if they will um, treat Benjamin the way that they treated Joseph. And that's why this is, this is being done. Verse 3, As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their asses. Verse 4, and when they were gone out of the city, and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men, and when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Or where, why have ye stolen? Um, where, wherefore then have ye the silver cup? <clears throat> verse 5 is not this it in which my Lord drinketh and whereby indeed he divineth question ye have done evil in so doing and this um, by of course Joseph is not a diviner he's not an Egyptian but he is trying to uh, confirm their belief that Joseph was an Egyptian and by saying this because uh, if they knew it was Joseph they would question um, this question about Joseph being a diviner and uh, the cup is uh, how he divines they would question it so Joseph's just trying to confirm that they they still don't know his identity verse 6 and he overtook them and spake unto them these same words. Verse 7. And they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words? God forbid that thy servants should do according to this thing. He's, they're, they're like, what are you talking about? Why would we, why would we do this um, uh, to uh, Joseph? Or to thy Lord? Because they don't know that he's Joseph. Verse 8, Behold, the money which we found in our sacks' mouths we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan. Listen, this happened the first time, and we brought the money back with us this time when we came. Uh, or the last time when we came, we brought the money back plus more money. How then would should, should we steal out of thy Lord's house silver or gold? Why would we come back, return the money uh, that, we found, that we found in our sacks, and then come back just to steal silver or gold uh, out of um, the house of uh, thy Lord. And they're, they're talking about uh, Joseph when they say thy Lord. Of course, they don't know that it's Joseph. Verse 9. With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let him die, and we, al and we also will be my Lord's bond bondsmen. They're saying, hey, search our sacks, and whoever, you, if you find this cup in one of our sacks, uh, let him die, and then we'll be your bondsman. And this was uh, the penalty in the Code of Kamarabi, which they were well acquainted with from living in the land of Canaan, and that would be death for stealing from a palace. Um, of course, in the land of Canaan, property being more sacred than life itself. Verse 10, And he said, Now also let it be according unto your words. He with whom it shall be found, with whom it is found, shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. He said, Okay, um, I'll agree to that. So, whoever, uh, if we find the cup, whoever sack it's in, he's going to be my servant and you guys will be blameless. Verse 11, Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground, and opened every man his sack. Verse 12, And he searched, and began at the eldest. This would be Joseph's steward, searching uh, the patriarchs, the brothers, beginning at the eldest, and left at the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack, of course, Benjamin being the youngest. 
And it was there because Joseph had had it placed there. Verse 13. Then they rent their clothes and laid it every man his ass and returned to the city. Verse 14. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground, probably pleading with him. Verse 15. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? Question. What not that such a man as I can certainly divine? This is Joseph again trying to see if, trying them to see if they know his identity and still believe he's an, he is an Egyptian. Verse 16. And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? Question. What shall we speak? Question. Or how shall we clear ourselves? Question. God hath found out the iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and both me and he also with whom the cup is found. And this, this confession from Judah is what jo Joseph had been laboring to procure from them. Um, he wants to know uh, how they feel and if they understand that what they did was wrong. Verse 17, And he said, God forbid that I should do so. But the man in whose hand the cup is found, this is Joseph speaking, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. Verse 18. Then Judah came near unto him, unto Joseph, and said, O my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not thine anger burn against thy servant. For thou art even as Pharaoh. Judah saying, let, let me speak to you. Let me, let's talk about this for a second. And, and let me speak to you. And please don't get angry. Because uh, you have as much power as Pharaoh. And pretty much Joseph has the power to make heads roll. And if you don't want to know what that means, just use your imagination. Verse 19. My Lord asked his sir, I'll just say, off with your head, and the heads roll, so you can get it. Verse 19, My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? He's saying, This is what you said unto us. Question. Verse 20, And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead. And he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. Of course, uh, Israel, Jacob, he did love uh, Benjamin uh, because he was the only one of his children uh, left that was born of Rachel. Verse 21. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Bring him down unto me, that I may set mine eyes upon him. And you told us, um, <clears throat> yeah, and you told us to bring him down to us so he, uh, he, so you could see him. Verse 22, And we said unto my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. Verse 23, And thou saidest unto thy servants, Except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall not see my father. You shall see my face no more. You told us unless we brought Joseph Benjamin that you weren't gonna, we weren't gonna see your face anymore, which means we couldn't buy any food and we're starving. Verse twenty-six. And we said we cannot go down. If our youngest brother be with us, then we will go down, for we may not see this man, see the man's face, except our youngest brother be with us. Verse twenty-seven. And thy servant my father said unto us, Ye know that my wife bare me two sons. Talking about Benjamin and Joseph. Verse 28. And the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces, and I saw him not since. And of course, when they had put Joseph in the pit, his brothers, they had um, uh, slayed a, a kid and or... A goat and put the blood 
on Joseph's coat of many colors that was given to him by Jacob his father and uh, brought it to Jacob to try to convince Jacob that Joseph was dead and it has worked uh, thus far. Verse 29, And if ye take this also from me, and mischief befall him, ye shall go down, ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. And certainly that's what Jacob had said unto them, uh, that if he would have lost Benjamin and Joseph, he would have died from grief. Verse, verse 30, now therefore when I come to thy servant my father and the lad be not with us seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life verse 31 it shall come to pass when he see it that the lad is not with us that he will die he's telling Joseph that hey listen if I don't bring Benjamin back when I go try to get my father um, if Benjamin's not with me when I go back to him he's going to die of sorrow Verse 32, For thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father. Judas telling Joseph, say, I vouch, uh, telling Joseph, say, I vouched for Benjamin's life, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame unto my father forever. Verse 33, Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad a bondman to my lord. He's saying, Keep me here as a bondsman and as collateral and let Benjamin go back with them so my father doesn't die from grief thinking that Benjamin is dead also. Verse 34. For how shall I go up to my father and the lad be not with me? Question. Lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come upon my father. He's saying, listen, if I go back and, and, and Benjamin is not with me, I'm going to have to watch my father die from grief right in front of my eyes. And he does not want to do that. All right, that's going to conclude uh, chapter 44 and today's lecture. Um, I love you because you love studying God's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. More importantly, God loves you for that. And he's the one that you want to please. That's where all the blessings come from. Um, everything good, the divine protection. And uh, most importantly, through his son, Yeshua, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus the Christ, you have um, eternal life if you should believe upon his name and believe that he died on that cross for you to pay for your sins. And certainly he did. It was a terribly awesome price that he paid. And uh, we have the gift of salvation and eternal life and forgiveness if we'll just accept it. Um, I know I couldn't carry around all these sins uh, without forgiveness. And so that's the beauty of Christianity is repentance. It's when you mess up. And of course, <clears throat> we all fall short of the glory of God and we're in the flesh. And the flesh is just going to mess up. That's just what it does. Um, so that's why we have repentance. And when you repent, God takes all those sins that you've had written down in the book of life and he blots them out. And you have a clean slate to start over with, a blank page to start over with. And praise God for that. Um, if you haven't uh, chosen to accept Him as your personal Savior, um, you should think about doing that. And you can do that uh, today, right where you're at. Uh, he'll come wherever you're at. And uh, He can get it done. He got it done on the cross. And even if you're a child of Cain, you can be grafted into the tree of life and have that eternal life. Don't miss the next lecture. Love you guys, and see you next time.